yeah, yeah. So I think we on. I think we live right now. So uh, if anybody's out there and they can see us, hey, man, uh, we we giving another shot at uh, going live with the BBD radio show. So if you're right there with us, um, let us know that you can hear us clearly. And we're going to try to send out some invites before we actually kick the show off. So meanwhile, Ms. Amber. Yes, sir. Welcome back. Thanks. It's good to see you. Good to see Thanks. you. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Yes. We are glad to have you back. So this will be the first time you went live with us, right? That is correct. That's that's pretty good. Yes. I'm digging that. Yes. I'm digging that. Let me go to my page here. Yeah, I guess officially live because you officially know, live. You know, you go live by yourself, but that's not really the same. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not. We it's not at all. All the extras, you know, yeah, here. Live officially live. You know, you go do live some by yourself, here, but that's so. not really the same. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. You know. <laughs> we gonna get this. How do I mute the sound on this though? Do 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 do. So let's let's check our audience. I'm digging it. What's up, family? Welcome to the Black by the Man Radio Show with your boy, brother Mike. Welcome to another one of our test runs for a live experience. Appreciate y'all tuning in with us. Uh, we're gonna try to send out some invites to get y'all hanging out with us. And what we want to do is finish. The discussion that we was having on Monday night when we did our first trial run with going live. So it was a really important show. It deals with your health and taking care of yourself. So we definitely want to finish that up today. But before we even get into that, let's welcome back our awesome team member, Miss Amber Morgan. Hello, everyone. Amber. Welcome, Amber. Thanks. So, Amber, this is your uh, first live experience, as we was just saying, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How's yes, it feel? Yes. Does it feel any different from... You know, mm -hmm. when we do, you know, podcasts, you know, pre-recording. No. no? No, not really. Not right now. Okay. Just because, you know, you don't have the, the phone in, in, in front of you and, and, you know, with everything coming on, like so-and-so said this and so-and-so said this. And, right. You know, so many people are watching, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we going live. We're we, we, we giving it another shot, man, because uh, we want to be able to do some live shows other than just our pre-recorded. It's always fun when we can go live. So let's see what we got going on here. All right. Also with me is my main man, 50 Grand, Mr. Derek Woodson. <clears throat> What's going on? Derek, welcome back, brother. Welcome back. It's good to have you as well. It's always a You pleasure. ready for another interesting night of trying to go live? Absolutely. And this time we got Amber with us. You know, so Amber can chime in with us and uh, any, anything we suffer through embarrassment, Amber can be right there with us. <laughs> so for that, we thank you, Amber. Right. So Amber, are you going to try to uh, see if you can send out anything? Oh, I did. I don't. Did you bring your phone? It, it's over there. Okay. Ooh. Well, you know, Look. It, it's, wow. how, how, how do you feel about, uh, <laughs> you know. Going, so now I feel left out. Feel That's left how out? I feel. <laughs> Y'all got your phone and I get up like a body. <laughs> yeah, you can make your way over there. You See, know, me, you, me. I mean, look, you guys were experienced live. and y'all had the, you know. We was ready, huh? Phones. Yes. We was ready, I know. You didn't say nothing. I said, I got my phones over there. I said, the beginning before I'm you said so we were live sorry, and everything. Amber. I'm so sorry, Amber. <laughs> we, we threw you out to the wolves, huh? Yes. Yeah, well, you know, you can feel free to bench over and grab it if you're if you up to it, you know. It's, you know, it's just not working today. So it's I'm, just not I'm, working. Yes. You good? You know, you're uh, your Spidey web, <laughs> yeah. Spidey web ain't working. It's not working. Okay, today. no worries, no worries. <laughs> Wouldn't it be so convenient? <laughs> right, we we gonna enjoy you being here. It's no worries, no worries. Yeah, let's see if we can send out some invites, get some people to hang out with us, man. Y'all want to talk about some good stuff sure. on this hump course, evening? Always. You know what I mean? Talk about some some good eating habits and things of that nature. So let's send out some invites, Mr. Woodson. How you doing with your invites, brother? I done sent out about um. I think I'm working with 30 already. Out. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, get some people to join in with us and on this, this hump. This is not a target for anyone thinking that I'm just targeting you. This is some information that you truly deserve and truly need. This is information for me as well. I'm okay. no different than anybody else. Show you right. So this is this is this is uh, a hand to you to understand that we all need help. We all need a way of life that we can eat to live. But there's so many people that are dying. True. And we're we're filling up the, the churches and the masjids and the places to go 
put um, mm-hmm. someone to rest instead of going to a function when everybody's eating to live. So trying to avoid. I think uh, that's right. Yeah, 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 that's a good point, brother. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. No Thank problem. you, brother. So yeah, we're gonna send out some invites, try to get y'all hang out with us, and then we're gonna jump into uh, finishing up the show from Monday. Um, if you missed out on Monday, the show is titled "Why Are We Dying?" And of course, we want to go over the three leading causes of why we're actually dying. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's funny that you actually, you know, said that because when you think of getting together, you don't think healthy. You know right. what I mean? You you don't think something green, or something red, something yellow. Right. So you know the you know your primary colors. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I see how you slipped that in there. <laughs> so you know you know you you don't think of that. You don't you know think of that when when you know you get together. Right. Um. So you know as we are filling up, like you said, you know, the churches and yeah. stuff. We're we're not filling up with the right things. You know. And, and then turn around. The same thing that you go to the church, it's like was brought to my attention the other day mm-hmm. by a brother. He was my brother Mike. What he said was that most of the people that when you go to the funerals, a person's overweight, into the funeral, eat the same food he did. He ate that made they killed him. Yeah, yeah, that's the word on the streets. You know? That you know, our funerals we feed each other the same food that put that person in the casket. I found out that from someone else from another nation, you know, and uh, you know, they were actually telling it as a joke, you know what I mean? I'm just mm-hmm. looking like Bro, that ain't funny. That's the truth. <laughs> it's the truth, right? It's the straight truth. I remember my mother passing away. God rest her soul. Um, um, shout out to Miss Tink. She made a whole a pan full of pepper turkey wings. I ate every last one of them. <laughs> I didn't share. I said, I said, Grandma, I love you to death. Mine, mine, mine. But I said, you bought, I'll crush one of them knuckles when you get one of these things. <laughs> I ate every last one of them because... You know, in pain you eat, right, 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 true. So therefore, you're eating out of pain and, right. and sorrow, and you're not looking what you're indulging. Also, for people to understand, Thanksgiving is coming. People who celebrate, mm-hmm. uh huh. So this should be a good show where people understand it's good to have fellowship. It's good to be around your family and loved ones. But also, like I said in the other um um lobby we had, don't be the person that overindulges in this food and don't be at the next meeting. Right. Yeah, that's uh, right. that's true. Yeah. That's true. That's, that's true, point. brother. That's a very good mm-hmm. point. Because Christmas right around the corner for the turkey, <clears throat> the ham, right, the the cottage greens with the uh, the the, uh, the uh, what is it? I haven't eaten so so long. What is ham hop? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all that stuff and all that salt you put in there, you saturate your food with. Yeah. So this should be a reminder to everybody, man. Just, just take notice. Uh, even if you don't comment, just listen to it and figure out how to survive and how to. Um, how to live healthy because I'm a testament to it. I like I still eat trash. I'm not even gonna lie, Burger King. I don't do McDonald's, but Burger King and stuff like that. Yeah, we gotta get you out of that, brother. Listen, man, the Whopper is my well <laughs> listen, about the Whopper. To say the Whopper's <laughs> my <laughs> friend. <laughs> As it turned into the a Whopper's commercial. my boy. <laughs> listen. We man. go way back. Listen, we got the coupons for the two Whoppers and the two fries and yeah. two mm. What? Eight ninety nine, right? With right. two stints, yeah. <laughs> you know, and a bypass for the uh, for the drink, right? Because right. you look at it, it's like, okay, yes, you know, it might be cheaper right now, but is it really cheaper? Long uh, health you know? wise, absolutely right. not. Right, exactly. Not ain't worth your life. I- exactly. So you know, those are some of the things that, you know that you, I guess you know, a mind trick. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, you got these coupons, or you know. And I was and I was actually um, talking to a nutritionist, mm-hmm. um, you know, a few months back, and I said, you know, I have to get into the habit of pulling healthy snacks with me because it's so easy to run and get something um, unhealthy. And she's like, well, yeah, you can get something healthy there, you know, as well. But I said, you're correct. However, it, one, it's really not that healthy because um, they put sugar and salad and everything else. Mm-hmm. But two, I was like, it, it the cost is more. Right. For no, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it, you know, for no reason. I mean, I was telling someone the other day, I said, I was going to cast a whole bunch of seeds outside in the field somewhere and just start growing some, and, you know, plants and growing and your own, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it costs way less to pull a carrot out the ground than go ahead and pluck some, you know, feathers off the dang on chicken. Right, right. But, um, you I, know? I, I agree, but as going to certain um, uh, supermarkets, I got to also say that. The same way that you shop in the middle of the store, like, the, like I said, I pay attention sometimes, not mm-hmm. all the time. 
But most of the stuff, like they said, like he said, or like certain other people say, that the best food is the food around the supermarket, not in the middle where all the trash mm. is. Right. Yeah. So when you go in there, and you got to so say you get paid on a Friday. You paid your bills up. You got grocery money, right? When you go in that store, best believe you have calculated every penny to spend what you want. So in the same token, do that with the vegetables. So you know they have um, they have coupons, etc. <clears throat> I said coupons with Burger King. So if you know if you're going to get the spring mix and it's say five ninety nine regular payout, and you mm-hmm. look into the uh, little coupon, it says three ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Right. The same way you would shop for the trash, shop for the stuff that's good for you. We don't want to do that. We'll put this block in front of us. Oh man, I can't do <clears throat> that much for an onion. But you'll get out there and order <laughs> right. from a restaurant mm-hmm. paying thirty forty dollars for two cheese steaks, some fries, and the soda. Right. True. True. Very. Very true. <laughs> Your uh, face. You was definitely right about the supermarket. <laughs> right. All the processed foods are set up in the middle aisles. The healthier foods are usually on the outer aisles. That's why the produce department's always on the outside. And um, it does take effort. You know what I mean? It takes it effort. It does. You know, and uh, I think there's a lot of myths that we use to keep ourselves out of it by saying, well, man, I can't afford that healthy food. It's, it's too expensive. Well, I mean, it's not as expensive as a casket. Uh, it's right. not as expensive right, exactly what I as a hospital really? visit for four days with two stents in your heart, you know, like, and I hate to be so hardcore about it, but that's the reality of it. Like this, this is serious. This is life or death. So for those who just tuned in and you didn't get a chance to catch us for our first live feed, which we did Monday, we did a test run. And uh, this is actually part two of that test run. What we were discussing is this particular book It's called Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman. It's a book that I recommend for everyone to get. It's, it's definitely uh, a lifesaver, and it teaches you about many things that deal with food being the cause behind our sicknesses and that we're not aware of it, which is why we continue to stay on that same path so much within our communities. So we're trying to break that by putting out some information that we find to be very valuable. So I kind of want to recap for the audience as well as Miss Amber you know exactly the things that we went over. So um, the first part was that according to the Center of Disease Control, the CDC, is that uh, the top three deaths of African Americans is um, heart attack, cancer, and stroke. Along within that, you got diabetes and high blood pressure. It's kind of like the intro to all that. And what it dealt with was Western diets are pretty much, according to Dr. Furman, designed to kill you. This is the food pyramid that they teach us from first grade, kindergarten forward. Right? So I'll go over that. It's called the Standard American Diet. The acronym is SAD. I didn't find that to be a coincidence. (laughs) Acronym is SAD. So that diet that we eat, Standard American Diet, is what we all eat. This is what they taught us to eat from school. This is what they fed us. It's 54% processed foods, 32% animal products, 11% whole grains, and 4% vegetables, fruits, nuts, and beans. So Dr. Furman explains that this is what's getting everybody sick because we're eating a bunch of processed foods and we haven't been taught the proper nutritional value of eating foods that are micronutrient rich. So he has within his book what he calls the Nutritarian Diet. So let me give you some exacts on the Nutritarian Diet. All right, so under the Nutritarian Diet, it would be 60% fruits and vegetables, 30% seeds, avocados, and nuts, and 10% whole grains, potatoes, and animal products. So animal products, everything is pretty much reversed. You know, So instead of meat and animal products being the 60%, the 50% of your intake, it's represented by fruits and vegetables, You know what we call um, electric foods. So this is kind of what we were going over. And uh, we had just got into talking about the culprit that leads to all of this, which is usually it starts with high blood pressure, or what they call hypertension. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I want to go over tonight. We want to try to get some people in the room with us to hang out with us, um, get comments, see if anyone's got any questions about the info that we're going over. But you can get that book on Amazon. And as I explained on Monday, uh, Dr. Furman does not pay me to promote that book. You know, I know it's a lot of business people that are looking <laughs> at that and be like, man, you ought to make him pay you. If I could, I would. But I'm more concerned that we get it as a community of people. Let me, let me go ahead and start our recording here. Yeah, I'm more concerned that we get it as a community of people so we can, you know, do better for ourselves and stop always trying to rely on the medical community 
to bail us out when we get in you know situations of crisis of sickness because the reality is the medical community is designed to treat your symptoms they're not designed to um, heal you you know cure you you know teach you um, how not to be in the situation again mm -hmm. so just off the back family friends um, do you have experience amber with people being affected by diabetes cardiovascular disease cancer stroke any of that any of that in the family with your friends or yes yes uh, pretty much almost doesn't oh true <laughs> on my, on my true, side, like true. half yeah yes <laughs> pretty much it, true. one one thing or another um high blood pressure um not necessarily cancer uh but diabetes um and hyper blood uh hyper uh, hypertension high blood pressure um is actually the women on my father's side they don't really live past 62. wow wow pretty much i mean they they've, they've passed away pretty young so is that yeah. looked upon as like a curse within the family um, you know when people get fearful no. when they get up around that age no no no, no okay no good, no good. no it's not really talked about Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, we did say so, black families, didn't we? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it's just something, you know, it's just something yeah, that happens, you right, know? It, right. It's just something that's not really talked about because it's just something that, okay, you know, that, that's what happened and, you know, they're no longer here. Right, I got you. Point blank, you know? I got so, you. I mean, I, I, I personally, um, you know, think that, you know, it, it has a lot to do with your diet. Oh, yeah, it's it does. It's not genetic. No. It's not something that's just going to happen to happen. Right. You know, you know, it, it's definitely something that, you know, you, you have a lot to do with uh, as far as control. Yes, we do. And I think that's what we're missing. We don't know that. You know what I mean? So right. that's why we try to bring it forward. And like I said, you know, we're in the information age, so we didn't uh, necessarily grow mm -hmm. up if you have a certain age with this type of information. You know, our parents didn't have it. Uh, but the further you go back, they definitely ate more real food. You know, they mm -hmm. ate more electric foods, foods that grow natural from the earth. And this is why you hear people say, well, you know, my grandfather been eating bacon, you know, for 40 years. Well, I mean, that was him. <laughs> you know, doesn't mean you can do that, you know. Right. <laughs> Today the food's a little the, different. Uh, way different, especially with, you know, processed foods and the access to you know, fast foods and stuff like that. Because when's the last time that there was a fast food restaurant, you know, I would say back in the day, you mm -hmm. know, there was a lot of cooking going on. It might not have been the healthiest of cooking, but definitely cooking fatty foods um, are, I'm going to say more healthier, but more healthier than, than a fast food. You right, know, right. cooking a burger at home is definitely way more healthier than cooking a, a getting, grabbing one from McDonald's. Definitely. Um, I look at it when you look at it, a person who's like you're us or about 40. Mm -hmm. Uh, not you, man. Who, like who's about 40? <laughs> <Not me>. 38. <laughs> <laughs> but when you look at the, the elders in, like, say, coming in like to the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s, right? A lot of that stuff they used for cooking, like lard and stuff like that, was basically just fat. Yeah, it, was it wasn't just fat. added with all the stuff they put into it now. So when you look at that's why your grandfather lived for 80 some odd years. Right. Because he didn't eat all the scientific crap that goes to the food that we're eating. Yep. So that's why that that, that argument mm -hmm. is a good argument, but it lacks what the people need to hear. Because when you do stuff like now, there wasn't a McDonald's in the 30s. Right. There wasn't a Burger King in the 30s. You right. ate, it was a mom and pop shop where you had ham, you had this, but it wasn't all the stuff in it that right. made people sick. Right, true. So then you had the people who had fresh, uh, fresh greens. Mm -hmm. where everything was fresh because it wasn't put through something to make it something that was foreign. Right. Mm -hmm. So now that's why the parents are living longer. So now our ages coming into the forties and fifties, we're to, don't feel like <laughs> we're eating, <laughs> we're eating McDonald's. <laughs> they introduced this trash to us, so therefore it can kill us. But we're looking at it. I don't feel like cooking tonight. Yeah. You know, I remember y'all back in it. Well, he said he's 38, so I'm let him slide. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when I remember, they had a dollar Big Mac. Yeah. I do remember that. So we thinking, that, oh, yeah, we get Big Macs tonight. Right, Whole right. time we getting cardboard mm -hmm. and some, <clears throat> some, some trash, but that was a meal. Right. It was a meal. It did it did feed us. Yes, we, it we did. didn't know how horrible it was. Exactly. You get what I mean? And then uh, often in a lot of, uh, you know, like, black areas, black communities, they, the society purposely makes food deserts. 
Y'all familiar with food deserts? No. All right, so a food desert is a particular area where there's really no healthy food even offered in the area. Wow. You know what I mean? So if you look around black communities, mm -hmm. you'll see a lot of food deserts. You're going to see fast food restaurant, crab spots, pizza joints. You're not going to see Whole Foods. You know, you're not going to see international spices. You know what I mean? It's not stores like that. So grocery that's done. Grocery stores, too. That's right. Grocery stores, too. So that's done by design because convenience is a big thing that we look for. So if they make it convenient to have KFC and McDonald's, Burger King and Wendy's, Royal Farm, 7-Eleven, Wawa, you know what I'm saying, the pizza joint, the yep. cheese steak joint, that's what the majority of the people are going to grab. You know what I mean? Like think about if it was the exact opposite. You were surrounded by places that sold fresh vegetables, fresh seeds and nuts, like that would change your diet. So mm -hmm. a part of it, we're actually being victimized by um, the way the layout of society is. Wow. Food desert. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you think about where you live throughout mm -hmm. your life, you know what I mean? Like, it's food deserts, you know. Like, um, I, I, I go to, and I'm not going to shout the store out, but y'all know what I'm talking about. It starts with a W in Harford County. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to a lot of people, they're like, man, I can't go there. They're too expensive. And I'm like, yeah, but they got the healthy food, you mm -hmm. know. Like, I got to go somewhere where I can find the fresh items that I'm, I'm getting. Um, some of the other chains, they got a decent produce aisle, but... When you get into trying to be healthy, and I got a long ways to go like everybody else, but I'm still in motion. Right. That's why we do shows like this. Like, you you might have to travel, you know, to get the healthy food. I mean, mm -hmm. what's that store they just opened up in uh, Bel Air where Circuit City used to be at? Mm -hmm. Sprouts or something like that? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. That's yeah. it, yeah. See what I'm yep. saying? They ain't yep. putting no sprouts in Aberdeen. <laughs> No. They're not putting no sprouts in Edgewood. We get another I mean, royal farm. Have you, right, right. you're going to get another royal farm. Even you know? just driving down towards the <clears> city, you know what I mean? Look to your left and look to your right. Where's the grocery store? Right. Where? Right. right. You know, and I wasn't even, um, you know, I worked down in the city at Hopkins, Johns Hopkins. And, you know, you, you see, you know, the, the Popeyes in the one corner. Mm -hmm. And then you see the Popeyes on the, you know, the other corner. Right. Past the McDonald's. You, there's two Burger Kings. You know what I mean? Right. And that's all within, you know, that, that, that one vicinity. Yeah, that radius. Right. Exactly. How many grocery stores? Yeah. See? That's what I mean. I'm just, you know. Yeah. And, I, and it didn't even, I didn't even, wasn't even brought to my attention until um, one of my uh, business partners she has said something a few months ago about um, <clears throat> food deserts. And I was like, dessert? Right. <laughs> De she's like, no, des I'm like, dessert. Right, right. You know, and she's explaining to me. She's like, no. She was like, look. She's like, you know, just look around. Mm -hmm. What? Is she's like, she, and that, that's, her, that's her thing. That's what she wants to do. She wants to, you know, um, bring, you know, awareness to it. Right. And make a change. Because um, yep. I didn't even know... I, 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 I had no clue. Yo, yeah, you know? yeah. It's a I lot we no don't have a clue, clue about. Exactly. Yep. And I was like, oh, that's a good point because you see these corner stores. Mm -hmm. But even the corner stores, what do they have? Trash. Tasty Bunch cakes. Of garbage. Yeah. yeah. All right. My favorite items. It's yeah. a sugar fest. It's a sugar fest. Right. Shout out to right. the Honey Bun. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> first, the Big Mac, the then Honey Bun. <laughs> it's just being, it's being realistic. Right, know? right, right. right. We get, I might get on here and they'd be like, yeah, man, you know, I. <clears throat> vegetables matters this scene you at royal farm with the honey bun man come on come on. right come it, on. it makes it it makes it very difficult uh shout out to my man benny shalom benny benny says uh, i highly recommend sprouts yeah me too i've been in sprouts several times right they, right they actually got a lot of healthy food there like i'm saying you gotta kind of travel around you know if you're from the hood you got to come out the hood and, and go to some of these uh european areas yeah. right right <laughs> you know and it also brings um to uh brings to light of the transportation issues Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, are you willing to take that bus to be healthier? You know, are you willing right. to be able to, you know, expand out and, and travel? Um, are you able to, which again goes to, you know, the food deserts and again goes to, um, you know, society and, and how it's, I want to say it's a setup. It is definitely it, you know? a setup. It's definitely a setup. Uh, Dr. Furman teaches that. When food enters your body, it only has the option of doing one of two things. It either helps or it hurts. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. Like, that that did something to me when I learned mm. that. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it put a little bit more consciousness in me. Yes. Or what I put in my mouth. I'm not saying it works every time. 
I'm a sucker for a chicken cheese steak. But at least I'm trying to learn this stuff, right? You know what I mean? And then apply it in my life. Um, the biggest intake we have is processed foods. Now, we talked about processed foods a little bit when you wasn't here. But okay. when you think about processed foods, like what do, you, what do you think about when you think about processed foods? When you say processed foods, the first thing that comes to mind is McDonald's. Okay, definitely processed foods. So it's a okay. lot of things like that that's common to us, right? Mm -hmm. But there are other processed foods that we're not aware of. See, like bread. SpaghettiOs. Yeah, SpaghettiOs. Uh, bread. Anything almost, almost in like any any bread you eat. If it's not what mm -hmm. they call like an ancient grains bread, you know right, what I mean, right. or what they yeah, say, hundred right, percent right. full grain, right? Hundred percent right. whole grain, right? right? Yep. Everything else is refined grain, right? And uh, Dr. Furman said, with the refined grains, they actually take the fiber out, which is the most important part you need. Mm. The fiber is not in it, you know, and that's how they got mm. it looking the way it looks, like a regular slice of bread. And then when you get like full grain bread or ancient grains bread. And you look at it, and it looks like a, a rocky road. It's all kinds of seeds and bumps mm -hmm. and stuff. And, You're you know, right. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, what right. Like, what is this? Right, <laughs> crust is a little bit harder. <laughs> I'm taking this back. Right, you know, we're like, nah, I don't <laughs> want this. I like that yeah. soft yellow bread. Right, <laughs> right. where the soft yellow bread at? <laughs> Black people don't eat this. You know. <laughs> It's our famous go-to. Black people right. eat this. Shout out to Opel Bird. Opel, thanks for tuning in with us. She says, uh, grow, grow, grow your own. Very true. There you go. You can grow there your you own go. if you got some, you know, some land. Like, I, I would love to do that. I don't have land to do it. But if somebody got some land, I'll come help you if I can get some free uh, vegetables. <laughs> Look, come on over. Take care of Yeah, take I'll take come help you till the earth. <laughs> right. You know, I get some free vegetables. But, yeah, growing your own is good. Um, uh, Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory spoke about growing your own. And he was saying one of the things you're going to encounter that you don't know is that they've already, like, tainted the seeds. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, man, are you serious? Yeah, he said they already genetically tainted the seeds. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you what gave truth to that, right? If y'all remember, it was on Facebook, like, last year, it was some black farmers that got seeds with these other white farmers from a particular spot. I don't know if it was, I think it was the government. Mm -hmm. And the black farmers found out that their seeds were like fake seeds. Mm -hmm. So they got, gave all the white farmers like the original seeds and then they gave them like some fake seeds and mm -hmm. they never like grew anything out the ground and they found out and they went back to like bring a lawsuit against them because it was mm -hmm. straight you know, racism. Should. Yeah, yeah, so mm -hmm. even with the seeds, you kind of got to find a way to get you some authentic seeds. Right. Well, try to try like, right. You got to beat them at their own game. Go to, go to their um, establishments, you know, go in there and attack them from the inside out. Yeah. You know, go in there, establish me, you know, hey, how you doing? I'm just looking around for a little bit. Sprouts. Yeah, snap. Everybody, let's go. Right. But uh, back to the one situation as far as, like, the, the, the money that you spend on these vegetables. <clears throat> you take your bad habits and you put them against your good habits. Mm -hmm. Use your bad habits and decrease that money that you're spending on your bad habits and apply it to your good habits. Right. So if you're out there doing the week and you have a bad habit, say of smoking, drinking, getting high, whatever whatever your vice is that has no benefit to your life. Right. Take that money and say you subtract it from what you're spending. Mm -hmm. And try to take that money and put it towards your what you would get at the grocery store. That's good. And you'll see the difference. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a car, of which I don't, which I don't drive, I right. have the means to get around. But I don't drive. Mm -hmm. But so, therefore, if you don't drive, <coughs> there's Uber out there. <coughs> Say, for instance, that you're buying alcohol. You alcohol, you like a big bottle or whatever. Oh, you nice bottle. It's $20, $23. Mm -hmm. Back and forth at 7 and 8. That's back to the grocery store, back and forward. Right. Try to take the money that you use that is no benefit to get the stuff that you need. That will save <coughs> money. And you'll look at it in the end game, you're saving grocery money because you're not spending no money in the bad areas. Right. That right. That's, that's good. That's yeah, we have to get away from the myths of healthy food costs more money. It's not always the case, but even if that is the case, like it's worth your life. Mm -hmm. Two things I'm never going to complain about being more expensive. One is healthy food, and two is a black business. Stop letting this is slightly more expensive be the reason that you don't eat healthy and the reason why you don't practice group economics. It's an excuse. It's a terrible excuse. Because, again, we all have our vices. So you don't want to pay more for the healthy food. You don't want to pay more to support the black business. But then you go buy a Gucci bag, right? Right, You right. go You go buy right. Jordans for $289. Right. You get what I'm saying? So we go. all pick our vices. Mm -hmm. And stand outside and wait for them. 
stand outside, wait for them to hold nine. Yep. You know, so like how when it comes to supporting black business or when it comes to buying healthy food, yep. all of a sudden now we are money yep. conscious. Yeah, because money is the absence of value. If you don't value uh -oh, it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Amber Morgan. Oh, get him, get him. We said the magic the word. Value, okay? <laughs> because, you know, if you don't value it, all of a sudden you don't have the money. If you value it, boom. Where did money come from? You right. said you were broke. I like oh, that. I well, like that. No, oh, that's a deep subject, ain't it? Yeah, well, I like that. Go, go ahead and explain that again, Amber. Let so, me hear that again. Let me break it down. Right? Break it down for right. them. Bring it back. So, you know, when whenever you ask somebody to do something, that's something that they don't want to do, mm -hmm. right? They don't have the money. They don't have the means. They don't have the means to do it. They have the money because it lacks value to them. Right. When you lack value, right, in something, you don't have the money for it, mm -hmm. right? So when you <clears> see the value in it, all of a sudden you have the money in it. Back. Right, the, and it's and 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 it check makes it sense. right. It makes Let's, sense. Hey, we're going to go out. Oh yeah, you know. Right. Didn't yesterday you said you're you're because they found value in that. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. They found, exactly. Value, they found that. value going out. But didn't you say electricity was due? Not that you don't like that. That, that not that you don't um have value in electricity, but you're like you know what that can wait. Right. At that moment, going out is more important than paying your electricity. Mm -hmm. At the moment, getting your nails done is, you know more value than going to, you know, your car notes coming up. Yep. You know? I, I just love the way you put that. It's, so, it's how, yeah, it, it makes sense. It's right, how they value right. it. Exactly. Exactly. When I like you, that. Right. Exactly. When you like the value, mm -hmm. you don't have that money. Right? So in the absence of value, you don't have that, you don't, you don't have the money. Oh, wow. Look, my man, uh, my man Benny says, love yourself first, pay the farmer or pay the doctor. Hey, exactly. There you go. See, that's that value. They, that, va it's that value. Exactly. You're not valuing exactly. yourself, right? If it's not sitting up front, you know, what <clears> I mean? <throat> and it's not necessarily the, the value, um, the value in it in, in in general, but what you value, right? It's, it's the lack of your value and what you value at that moment. And Absolutely. you should value your health, right? Yeah, he took the words out of mouth of so many words. I was mm -hmm. going to say either get out there and spend that money on that produce, or have your family pay for your funeral. Yeah, right. exactly. It's going to be money spent. Because you can't do it because you did right. it wrong. Right, right. Yep. It's going to be money spent. Yep. It, it, it's money is the it. absence of value. Yep. Yeah, money is the absence of value. Yep. I like that. Yep. I like that. Lack of money. Yeah, so Lack it's all value. about taking... <laughs> you taking his notes. You know, like if you don't want to be sick, <laughs> if you don't want to be sick, you're going to have to take your health a little more serious. So understanding that you can read books like... Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman is teaching you that right now you are living to eat, which means you're not eating for nutrition for your body. Right. We're supposed to be eating for nutritional purposes for a body, but instead we're eating for our taste, mm -hmm. things that taste good, things that smell good. We're eating for our senses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, feels good to the touch. My dad used to tell me when I was younger, like, <clears throat> he was like, you eat, who is it? You eat to uh, live. You don't live to eat. That's right. <laughs> and I didn't, and when I was younger, I mean, That's when right. I say I'm a foodie, I mean, I, I, I just, I like to eat. Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily, I'm a foodie, like, um, you know, like to eat new things, like to experience it. You know, people, when they're, they say foodie, they, they, that's what they mean, like, you know, they experience it. Not me. If I like something, I eat a lot of it. And right, it's usually right. not that good. Right. So when I was younger, my dad used to say that. And I was like, all right, dad, whatever. As I get older, I'm like, Oh, that's what he means, you know. That's exactly what he means. Oh, you know, I shouldn't eat that much cheesecake. <laughs> right, yeah, dairy, dairy's, dairy's one of the big ones. Like, so, dairy mm -hmm. is the hardest one. It's the one I struggle with the most. I do well with not having a high meat intake. Chocolate is one of mine. Chocolate, see, that's sugar. Any, and, yeah, sugar, yeah, anything. Sugar. And not necessarily candy, but anything chocolate, chocolate cake, Oreos, cookies, it doesn't chocolate. matter. Anything with chocolate, Right. I'd be like, so I'm just going to take this. <laughs> have a little, have have a little taste. No, I don't want no candy. That's not good for you. Oh, chocolate. Oh, let me get just a little. I'm yeah. addicted to what you gonna call it. It's out. Yeah, oh, really? <laughs> it's out. It's out. Love it. old school candy bar. Yeah. Something about a chocolate rice krispie treat. <laughs> I even found a king size. You know what I mean? Really? Right, right. What? Listen. What? Yeah, which McCullers? I remember them back in the day. Yeah, back right in the on. day. Over there in the Riverside Plaza, the gas station right there, man, they know me by my face. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Give me a cool Coke with one of them, which McCullers, man, I'd have made my day. <laughs> ben Yamin <laughs> says, wheat, meat, dairy, and sugar are silent killers. Very true, mm -hmm. brother. Mm -hmm. You get a bell for that. They yeah. are the silent killers. Like wheat, meat. Yeah, because, uh, you know, they got us thinking yep. wheat is good. Uh, yeah, I was giving what he right. said because I, tried, I switched over because... 
I love Italian bread and mm -hmm. um, um, what's the other one? Um, uh, what's the other bread? It's really, really soft. Uh, potato bread. Oh my goodness. The yellow bread, potato bread. And yeah, and if you're eating wheat bread, uh, you might as well just eat potato bread. You know, the wheat bread we tend to think is better, but it's not. But, it's it's refined right, wheat. Right, it's right. It's processed. Uh, and, and Dr. Sabia would be the first one to tell you all it does is produce starch in the body. Starch produces mucus. Mucus, mucus keeps the uh, body that acidic. Makes sense. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a haven for disease mm -hmm. to grow in. Wow. So that's what eating healthy does that prevents you from getting sick. It switches your body from being acidic because disease only survives in an acidic body. Switches your mm. body over to being alkaline. No mm. disease can survive within an alkaline body. So when Dr. Sabi was curing people, he would be the first to tell you, yes, I cured the AIDS, I cured the HIV, I cured the herpes, I cured the diabetes, the Alzheimer, all these different diseases, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. But Dr. Sabi said, I cured one disease. The body suffers from one disease. That's the compromising of the mucous membrane, excess mm -hmm. mucus in your body. Mm -hmm. Depending on where that mucus goes up, goes at and piles up at is what they call the disease. So if it's in yeah. your heart, it's, it's cardiovascular disease. Right, if right, it's I in your you joints, that makes sense. it's arthritis. If it's you. in your head, okay, it's Alzheimer's sense. disease, right? So Dr. Sabi said that's because you have an acidic body. You have mm -hmm. an acidic body because you're eating animal products, right? Now, as much as we all love the good taste of a piece of meat, Dr. Sabi brings you into the reality that what you just ate was a piece of dead flesh. Okay, and as, as pretty as it looked yeah. to you in the store, it was nice and pink, it was nice and white. He was like, it's really food that's actually rotting. They put food coloring in it to make it look like it's something fresh. And you are dumping bacteria infested dead meat into a live organism. Your body is alive and you just put something dead in it and then you expect them to have good results. And he said it's impossible. The right. body wants live food. So live foods are what he called electric foods which are foods that naturally grow on the earth, and a lot of them have to be green. You know, so the green vegetables are the cruciferous uh, vegetables, and they are the best ones for you that hold the most micronutrients. And even when we eat them cooked, you are reducing right. the uh, micronutrients in it. And right. then by the time you add salt and pepper or season or butter, yeah. like you might butter. as well just had a bowl of ice cream. You know what I'm saying? All the nut nutritional value has been devoid. So, so what you, we should steam them? Like, yeah, you can steam them. Steam them is good. Uh, the optimum is raw, you know? So you know how sometimes you go to like a, a gathering at the workplace and they got a raw plate of vegetables over there like broccoli and carrots and, they and got cauliflower. The, the, yeah, the, dip the, the, the dip on the side. The dip is in the, the center, yeah. right? And we bypass that like, oh, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, go straight to the real food, but that's the food that's actually going to keep you alive. You that's know. the real, real food. Well, that's the real food. Mm -hmm. So between Dr. Joel Furman and Dr. Sebi, and uh, also the Minister of Wellness. You know, the Minister of Wellness has a channel on YouTube. He's basically a combination of Dr. Sebi and Dr. Joel Furman. And then he kind of puts it in layman's terms where people can understand it. And he's got his own books and things of that nature. But it all leads to the same thing. It's the standard American diet, which is the diet we all eat, that's getting us sick. It's coming from the food. And the biggest right. intake is the meat and the dairy and that dairy is a challenge it's a bigger challenge than me because the dairy is in everything it's in everything i mean you talk about everything from milk to butter to cheese <laughs> to yogurt you understand what i mean it's it's, it's Man, in everything i'm you not know? a yogurt fan i try nah me either i i, I just i don't want it because it's dairy like i've tasted yogurt before it tastes fine but it's dairy you know and i'm, I'm trying to cut back hard on this dairy because the dairy really clogs the arteries up like really really bad so we can actually not only avoid sickness, according to Dr. Furman, but you can reverse sickness by changing the way you eat. You can reverse yes. your hypertension, yes. reverse your diabetes. You can even reverse cancer yes. and, and heart attack, you know, cardiovascular yeah. disease, rather. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, like I said, um, not like I said, but listening to you, so I had a friend of mine. They were so afraid because the doctor put so much fear in them. Right. By, it's one of the tactics. By uh, switching up. Switching up their diet, they would they would die good, but they're taking a pound of medicine. So it's mm. like they're not getting their they're maintaining, mm -hmm. but they're not getting any better. Yeah, the medicine comes with side effects. You know, uh, we was listening to Doctor Furman mm -hmm. before we started the show. Did you hear when he said 
all doctors learn in medical school that all medicines it's are toxic. toxic. Right. You heard that, right? Now, mm -hmm. we, we think about that. He's saying that's the first thing they teach him in medical school, that all medicines are toxic. Oh, you know, so even though it may be fixing one thing, it's right. still toxicity. Yeah. It's messing up something else. Could be more severe than what it fixed. Fixed your arm, right. now you got a weak valve in your heart. Yeah, and uh, that, that listen, they had me to the point <clears> where I'm at, I screamed out like I was in the crowd. Right. Because it was something pertaining to me, dealing with high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. Because you'll take a lisinopril, then you'll take something for cholesterol, then you'll take something for a blood thinner, then you'll take something for um, retaining water. Yeah. You'll take so many things. They got something for everything, Before brother. you know it, you're taking four and five medicines. Right. Because your blood pressure's high. Right. And then everything that you're breaking down like a guy, almost, I mean, almost, <laughs> like, like a goddamn shotgun. You know what I mean? So I, I'm trying. This is me. And I'm telling everybody who's listening, this Everyone is in TV this land. is not something to play with because no, it's not. I have many friends and family out there that still are under the false pretense that it's hereditary to get blood pressure, right. heart disease, and all right. that stuff. It yeah, it runs me in the family. 40, and I'll be 43 years old. It took me until I was 41 mm -hmm. to get some education on how my body works. Now, did right. I accept it right away? Absolutely not. Right. But the simple fact is to have knowledge of it now and, and getting older than seeing my friends uh, passing away in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. most of them uh, heart attack, heart failure, mm -hmm. um, you name it. And it's to the point where yeah. now it's like, what will I do? Watch, keep watching people die. Keep adding to the adding salt to my own wound mm -hmm. until the people are standing over top of me. Right. Yep. It's about choice, y'all. If, if you choose <clears throat> to go, if you choose to drink today, if you choose to get high today, you choose to do all these things that can hurt you. Somewhere down the line, it's not going to happen overnight, and it's not. But right. somewhere, yeah. somewhere down the road, you got to choose to live too. You definitely got to choose to live, and you can avoid sickness by changing the way that you eat. It is really, really that serious. This is some of the secrets that they hold out on certain segments of society. You know, they don't tell you about it, but it's very disturbing. And that's why I wanted to do the show when we did it right. Monday. And I want to follow it up with, uh, with it today. Because if you just look at in the past three, four years, it's just been a lot of people dying. Mm -hmm. A lot of people dying. And every time I hear someone dies, I, I almost know with 60 to 80 percent accuracy, it's going to have something to do with heart attack, stroke, cancer, diabetes, or right. hypertension. You know, just dealing, you know, with, with my background and what it is that I do, one of the things that, um, you know, I, I am licensed with is uh, life insurance. Just Ooh, that alone, important. right, just that alone, people fail to understand that, one, you can't become an uninsurable, and two, the main thing that I'm seeing is that makes it sky high or make them uninsurable is... The diabetes, mm -hmm. the hypertension. Mm -hmm. You're on three or more medications. Like you're talking about the, you know, you're, you're on for the for the kidneys and the liver and the blood. Then you know, right. and and they're not insurable. And then they're looking at me like, well, well, now what am I supposed to do? And of course, you know, I'm, I'm a financial planner, so I I you know, you have to do a plan B. But you know, the plan A is there. You're able to go ahead and, like you said, choose to live. Choose to you live. You know, it costs put the work more. In. Yeah, put the work in and learn to change your nutritional diet. It's yes. worth your life. And, yes. and, and I'm going to reiterate this. I said this before. You, you don't know how horrible you're going to feel if you get taken off your feet and you can't be there for your family, especially right. if you have kids. Right. You know, so the fact that we walk around and eat whatever we want, when there's information out here now and we're being taught that this is what the sickness is coming from, it's, 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 right. we're, we're being selfish. Right. We're being very selfish because right. if we go down, our kids and family members are going to suffer just as much as we are. Exactly. And, and I'm so tired of hearing about funerals, you yeah. know. So this, this, is, this is what I came up with to help, you know, us get more educated. On right. It. Keep my ass out the casket. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm I mean? I'm about to take the bulls on my back on this one. I see everybody today saying, let's vote. Everybody get your vote out. You want to show your children that you voted. You want to show uh -oh. that how <laughs> proud you are to vote. But ask yourself today, what planet you have for your children to eat to live? You're so oh, proud of voting. Oh You're so proud God. of doing certain things in life. You're not giving real life lessons. Brother. You're giving lessons about voting for a situation that could help us or might not help us. But this episode can help us 
and it has a hundred percent rate of working Ooh. because it's all healthy. It all shows that the people that are hurting us have no real, I don't use the word promise in us because tomorrow's not promised. Mm. So therefore, if you vote today and die tomorrow, what success will you have in living? Mm. What did you leave for your children? Now, mm. I, can't, like, I don't have a lot, and I don't vote about having Church. a lot, but if I can get in here and Church. I can turn my disease around, that disease is um, high blood pressure, mm -hmm. and, I can and, set the, and I can set the standard, then that means, and everybody knows how big my boy is, you know what I'm saying? I can set that down for him. He can teach his son. He can teach his daughter. He can teach them. That is a legacy of living. Right. That vote can't save you. Ugh. It's only a just, justified day to where we think that we came out of the the uh, the shadows and we stand together, band mm. together. And I'm willing to take all the abuse from this comment because I can say that voting will not save your life. Brother. But this will. Uh, that was fire, man. Look, hold on. Let's, let's just give a moment for that. <laughs> I appreciate it, but it, it's just it's real. True. I just get mad when everybody, and I posted there, everybody always, it's like sad. It's like everybody jumps on this one bandwagon and runs with and think this is going to be successful. Being successful is doing something that's benefits you in the long run. Voting has not benefited black people for the last 50 to 60 years. But what has hurt us in the last 50, 60 years is listen to these people eating these bad foods in these pharmaceutical places that are killing us, and we listen to them all day, every day, all day without every a day. doubt. And here it is, me telling you that I love you, mm. and I want to see you tomorrow. Let's eat right. Let's eat right together. Let's learn together. Financial literacy, black economics, black businesses. Oh, you disregard it, but you're going to stand in a line where they don't care about you at all. Wow. So this this is shot to you, everybody. If you don't like what I'm saying, it just it's is powerful, what it is because I had enough. <laughs> because I'm looking at this. I'm That's 43 powerful. years old, and I have high blood pressure, and I thought the way I was living was correct. And tomorrow I may make another mistake. Right. I am only human, but the thing to make a mistake is to fix it. So this is me saying it to y'all. If y'all want to fix something in life, come together as black people. Fix our health, our wealth, and our lifestyle. Mm. Ooh, fire, good. brother. That was some fire. <laughs> that was Welcome to the Black <laughs> Body <know>. Man Radio <laughs> Show. Hey. Man, so, know. You know, so like what I heard in that that I thought was so powerful is that it sounds like you were saying either unbeknownst or subconsciously, people are more worried about their vote than they are their health. Absolutely. Wow. Well, I see the comments, fire. Yeah, yeah, that, that was deep, brother. That that, that was Absolutely. deep. Absolutely. Because that's true. You know what I mean? Like being more too. proud to show the world, <laughs> hey, I voted, yeah. than they are with keeping themselves healthy so they can be around for their family. Right, and, and Stati, and supporting you saying you voted today, like this sister's up here, and she promotes what she does, and I'm guaranteed nobody's going to show her no type of love. She's basically saying, I can teach Sad. you how to save your money, and I can make sure at the end of the day, if something does fall ill on you, I have a plan for you. Wow. Yeah. So give her, give her a shout out. This is Amber Morgan. Shout out to Amber she Morgan. She has financial literacy. She can tell you about life insurance. <laughs> We're not up here just to sit up here and talk to her. We blew in our face. We're up here to teach you some things that you can learn from. We're not here to look cute. Absolutely not. <laughs> I thought that's what we was here for. <laughs> but sometimes it's heartbreaking, man. I'm glad his brother gave me this platform because absolutely, he brother. was on. A lot of y'all don't He was on my heels for a while, and I ducked him. I ran. I, I look outside, see his car. Wouldn't even come to the door. You right. know, so I did a lot of running and ducking. But now I have a voice where I can tell people how I feel. Like I don't like when people make make errors. I make errors in my judgment. I don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. But you make an excuse to look good for Facebook. That is not what we need to do. What we need to do is band together and get it right. That vote will not do it because at the end of the day, if Trump wins, Trump wins. You're still poor. <laughs> you still don't have a car. Still you're still right. riding the bus. You don't have nothing that benefits you because it's the going presidential <laughs> debate does not help us. Right. And then you say we're going down to the governors and the people of our cities. At the end of the day, when you get a job, you walk to your job, you're a supervisor. You tell your person what to do. If he does not listen, you have to go to your boss. When you're the president, you think he runs this world, he has a person, the people that he has to go to. Mm. It's change you have to go to to make things stick. As you know, as black people, we don't get nothing done because we look as lesser, lesser than people. So at the end of the day, True. let's band together. And I'm getting a little... Upset. I'm sorry, right, brother. It's okay. It's okay. It just pisses me off, man. Because I, I that's get why mad. I said that's why it's internet radio. You get you get to say what you feel, brother. It's all good. That was some fire. I I, I feel your passion in that, and uh, of course I agree. 
Yeah, you know, like, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I'm just I'm just saying this 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 is me. So if y'all want to attack me, attack me. I'm more than I'm more than uh uh, uh, I'm an adult, right? And I've been places y'all probably never seen before, and I could take a, I could take a shot. But at the end of the day, stop with the, the buffoon, man. Yeah, I just think we have to take charge. You know, I think it comes a time where we have to take charge of different things in our life. Uh, today, we're talking about taking charge of your health. You know, but this happens to be the most important one because it doesn't matter what you've done in life. You know, if you're filthy rich, if you're middle class, or if you're dirt poor, Kobe Bryant is an example of that, right? Wow, like you, absolutely. You understand what I mean? Like, you have to ask yourself. Everybody wanted to be Kobe Bryant, right? You know, not everybody, but you get what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Okay, well, who wants to be Kobe Bryant now? Do you understand what I mean? I get do, bell, do, do, <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Do you want to be Kobe Bryant for, what was he, 43? Do you want to be Kobe Bryant for 40 years, right? And have all the fame and fortune and then be dead? Right, that's all gone. Or do you do you want to be you? You might not have the Kobe Bryant fortune and fame, but but you healthy and you know your lifespan might be a little longer. Though he didn't die from sickness, but the right. point that I'm making is the success he had. Yeah, the success he had. That's a life that you know a lot of us probably wanted up until he died Everybody as a young thinks man. The grass is green on the other side. So right, you still have to water it. Right. So there's somebody out here that say went to school with Kobe, went to college with him, but didn't make it. The way Kobe made it, mm -hmm. but he's still alive. You understand what I mean? He's still alive. So you don't you don't know how things are going to work out. We can't right. put all our focus on the materialistic things. Like your your health is more important than anything. You know, being healthy. Like I don't want to be sick. It's not cool being sick. I understand how the medical community works. I mean, I'm not stupid. I'm a go if I'm not feeling good, right, right? right? But you know, my goal is to try to avoid having to go to other people and say, "Hey, can you fix me?" I've been living my life the way I wanted to live it, eating pizza and crabs and cheesesteaks and pork ribs and pork rinds and bacon. You understand what I mean? And, 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 and you know, I've, I've been living my life for me. You know what I mean? I eat crabs twice a month during the summer. You know, like I've been living my life for me. And now that I'm sick and jacked up, I can go and go to other people and say, can you fix me? Can you fix me? Sure, we can fix you. Take these seven pills right. <laughs> every every morning, right? Of, of some stuff we grinded up together, you know, with some or, chemicals in it. Yeah. I'm just saying. I, I mean, I'll, I'll, scary. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down. I'll even, you know, you're talking about, you know, in the longer run. How many people do you know that say, oh, it's flu season? Oh, it's cold season. I, I get a cold this time every year. I get a flu right. every time this year. Do you think that maybe you should change something? Well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know. Now, of course, you know, as an Israelite, you know, I don't fool with pork, period, right? The Most High God told us not to fool with it. You know, it's a lot of people that are like, oh, that was the Old Testament. Listen, it's the Bible, <laughs> okay? I don't fool with it. But it's other things that go along with that. Like when God told us not to eat that, it wasn't for him. It was for us. <laughs> it's for our protection. We, we don't know what that pig is. Just because some people slap something around and put some seasoning on it, throw it in the pan and fry it up, doesn't mean it's going into your body with the with the same vibe that it went through your taste buds. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so within swine are all kinds of bacteria and, 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 and things that we're not aware of, right? So what you was talking about to tie this in, when people say, you know, it's that time of year, I get colds, I get allergies. Well, nobody knows that a part of that is coming from all of the things that have entered your body through eating that pig. You got a lot of nasty stuff in you from oh, eating that pig. I get it, I you get, get it, what I'm I saying? It, the bacteria it. and enzymes and, and viruses, they're all within that pork. They're in that bacon. They're in that pork chop. So, so that, you, that makes your body top. Right. So you eat all year and they got you thinking you got a cold simply because the weather changed and, you know, you was around somebody sneezing. That's a possibility, right? I'm not going to say it's not. Right, but right. But they're not right. telling that's, you yeah, about no, that. Yeah, that's yeah. not what I was saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they're not telling you what the highest possibility is, right. which is this came from the food that you eat. The sickness is already oh, yeah. within you. You Definitely. know, So if it came from that person who sneezed, you got sick because you already had stuff in you to activate that when he sneezed. Right, right, right. You, right, you right, get what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, when God told us not to eat those type of things, it was for our benefit, you know? Mm -hmm. So I seen... A, um, it was actually a sister. She was doing a video, and I don't know what the statistics are on it, but she was going into saying, you know, if you've been eating pork and you eat pork on the regular, it increases the chances of you testing positive for COVID because you got 
bacteria in you. You know what I mean? You got mm-hmm. um, parasites mm-hmm. in you. The pig is filled with parasites that do not die when you cook it. You know, so just because you burnt the hell out that bacon, <laughs> doesn't mean. Can I get a? <laughs> Can I get a? Bed? You know, it doesn't mean. So I'm just using pork as an example. Like <laughs> you have to take care of what example. you put into your mouth. Because it's a video, and I'll make this real short so you get back to it. It's a video where they poured Coca-Cola. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. All that pork, and worms came out. Right. That's what I'm saying. So that's in your is, body. This is supposed to be cut fresh. Right. You know what I mean? It's pink, whatever it is. <laughs> the, the greatest thing I've ever seen was pork, the right. other white meat. The other white meat, exactly. right? <laughs> Shout out to Don Beasy. I see you, D. So, yeah, it's, it's things that we don't know about. So um, your immune system gets stronger when you put you know, the right type of food in it, a nutritarian diet, which is going to consist of more fruits and vegetables and a small amount of animal products. And right. animal products include the meat as well as the butter, the cheese, and all that type of stuff. So uh, we didn't get a chance to go over G-bombs. So I went over G-bombs before on other shows before. So G-bombs is an acronym that Dr. Joe Furman came up with. It's literally the letter G and the word bomb. So it stands for greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. Oh, I just realized you spelled it out. Yeah. Because <laughs> when you first told me G bomb, G bombs. Oh, I got it acronym. now. Greens, it now. beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, seeds, and nuts, right? Hmm. These are the foods that Dr. Furman says you have to put into your body every day. This is what's going to protect you. This is when I learned exactly about. what we don't eat usually. We probably don't eat none of that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we eat greens during the holidays, day. right? That's when you get your greens. With the ham hocks. With the ham hocks, or you got the smoked <laughs> turkey, you know, for those who don't fool with the pork. But it's, it's heavily salted, you know what I mean? Of and um, he also goes into talking about the damage the salt does. But yeah, so the G bombs is a good acronym to remember. Eat that every day. Easier said than done, but you can do it. Like, you know, like I make a salad that's like a G-bomb salad, you know. That's what I put in it. Greens, onions, <laughs> mushrooms, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad Beans you said and that. seeds. Because I'm straight putting, I listen, I ain't going to lie to you. I'm glad you said it. I was putting baby arugula in there. I was putting spinach. Oh, yeah, that's I'm, still good. But I'm thinking G-bomb just struggling greens. I'm not yeah. thinking B-O-M-B. Right. The other. Yeah, no. Baby arugula, spring mix, right. that's, that covers the greens. <laughs> so you're getting your greens. I mean, you're supposed to eat something green every day. Listen, every yo, day. I just learned something. I've been around this brother for a minute. And he told me about G-bomb a while ago. And I'm thinking, it's, I'm thinking it's greens the whole time. And when you spell it out, yeah. I just said, listen to him. Did y'all see my face just now when he said bomb? I'm stuck like, yo. Yeah. Like, so I got crazy. a G-bomb salad that I make. You know what I mean? And, okay. Uh, I, I, I need to eat it more, but I eat it enough where I get an effect from it. You know what I mean? I have the, the kale smoothie in the morning, you know, when I'm on my A game. When I'm not on my A game, it's egg and cheese croissant, but from Burger King, I'm just saying I ain't perfect. <laughs> and also what he said, he said from doing the G-bomb, like, he said doing the G-bomb, if you eat these type of foods, if you do slip up the next day, right. what you put in you is like, I'm not going to be like mess his words up, but it's like a protection. The, right. Of the trash you put, don't go in there and say, well, I ate a G-bomb salad today, I'm going to eat trash for the next few days. Right. But if right. you eat something that's off that off that plan, mm-hmm. it won't be as bad. It won't right. be as bad. You've got to outweigh it's, the bad. It'll, it'll protect yeah. you. Right. right. So that, that, that's why, listen. Yeah, because some of these things are uh, superfoods. Shout out to, to my fam, Action Jackson. I see you, Mob. So, yeah, some of these things are superfoods. Beans are superfood. Onions are superfood. Mushrooms are superfood. The mushrooms, you can't eat raw, though. You don't get the full effect of mushrooms. Mushrooms have a mild carcinogen on them to protect them from animals in the wild trying to eat them, Mm -hmm. right? So it takes about 10 seconds for that to cook off. So as soon as you cook a mushroom for 10 seconds, that carcinogen is gone. So do you do a, 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 like, what is it? Not vegetable oil, but like, um, what's that oil? Uh, Coconut oil. Any type of virgin oil. Yeah, extra virgin olive oil. I was like, okay. I, don't yeah, yeah, that's me, fine. I know I put some butter in yeah, it. That, yeah, that's, that's, that's better than using butter. So that's <laughs> I, a good yeah. substitute for butter. But even with that, you don't want to be excessive with that either because it's right. still a refined oil. So you just, um like, when when I stopped using grease back in the day, I stopped, I don't do a lot of grease, mm-hmm. even still, because it bothers my stomach. So right. I just, like, you As put a little should. bit in there, 
to the, but I do it. I put a little bit in there and I let it go around the pan. I yeah. take my fingers. Yeah, coat the pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. right, yeah. right, right. Yep. Yeah, so extra virgin olive oil, E E V O O. That's think that what Rachel used to call it on the Food Network. Oh wow. You know what I'm talking about? Rachel Rachel Ray. Yeah. E V O O. Extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Amber like whatever. I, don't know. <laughs> I told you I got butter. So. <laughs> <laughs> well butter butter is not the butter, worst. I'm like, Ugh. Butter is better than margarine. There you go. Right? So a lot of right. people use margarine. You shouldn't use any right. type of margarine at all. Right. Margarine is margarine is one um let me get it right. One atom away from being plastic. Mm. So in order to turn mm. margarine into plastic, like a piece of plastic, like the bowl is it, they only add one atom to it, you mm. know? So if you set out a bowl of margarine on a hot summer day and then set out a bowl of butter, the gnats and the flies will only attack the butter because mm. unlike us, animals don't eat fake stuff. Insects don't eat fake oh, stuff. Wow. So they will not mess with the margarine, but they mm. will go after the butter. So butter is better than margarine because at least with butter, it, it's it's natural. It comes from a cow, so your body has an easier way, uh, you know, easier processing of it. Oh, yeah, okay. to break it down. Okay. Margarine, it, it can't break that down. You know, like it gets piled up in your arteries just like it looks in that bowl. You oh, know, it's, wow. it's 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 almost plastic. It's one molecule. That's what it is. I said atoms. One molecule. From being plastic so when they want to turn margin into plastic they add one molecule to it wow. and then it's plastic but um but butter is still a dairy so it still goes into clogging you up so you want to be um very restrictive about how much butter you eat like um I, i've been around people before say at the waffle house or something you know and then they you know, just spread that whole wall oh, that, of butter. Yeah, that's what I'm, doing. <laughs> I'm yeah. just looking like, man, you gonna have cardiac yeah. arrest after eating that. You know, like it, it's it's that bad. Right. But uh, EVOO is better. Extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil. You can use coconut oil. You know, uh, shouldn't be frying anything. Like you know, according to Dr. Furman, you don't recommend having no frying of any type of foods. But the answer to us getting healthier is in what we eat. You know, and that's sad that so many of us keep dying because we don't know this information. So that's why here at the Black by Demand radio show, we you make sure to provide you that. <laughs> you will be informed. I, I can't, we can't, like, I appreciate that, but some of us, like me, not everybody else, mm -hmm. the first thing I would throw at a person, man, need to serve more best men, that's that white people, sir. I'm be, oh, I'm yeah. Be now that's a sad state years. right there, yeah. At least, as long as I can, I can remember. Yeah, that's. The I got it from my mom. <laughs> she told me in a minute, like yeah. even though, like I honestly say, she didn't do seasoned salt and salt and pepper. Mm. She didn't have all the other seasons in there. Where you, you got some people's cabinets, they got about 50, like 15, 20, 30 seasons in there. Mm -hmm. she looked at my mother cup. It was a big blue joint of seasoned salt. Right. That was it, and she had salt and pepper. So she would season all her food mm. with season all. Mm. So we didn't have all the other stuff. So therefore, right. when she would say that, mm -hmm. she wasn't being disrespectful. She said, that's that white people said, because I don't eat it. Right. And she had a particular palate. So what she ate, we ate. Right, right, absolutely. So we didn't eat all the whole bunch of that crazy stuff. They told me, you got to have a good palate. If you didn't buy the food, right. forget about your palate. Yeah, and our, and our <laughs> palates are definitely not adjusted for healthy eating. That's At why all. when we eat foods that are healthy, we think it's bland. Like, oh, this is so bland. Right. It's supposed to be, you know, like all the sugar, and stuff all the sugar and the salt and all that's gone. But as your uh, taste buds adjust, you will begin to start tasting the food for what it's supposed to taste right. like. It's, it's really, really different. Um, I've been through it. And then you go back and you eat something you shouldn't eat, right. like Oreo cookie, potato chip, right. whatever. It's disgusting, mm -hmm. you know. But it don't stay disgusting long if you keep eating it. Come it go, yeah. it go yeah. right, it go so right back to that addiction. Right. <laughs> right, right back to that addiction. Yeah. So this yeah. is why we're dying. It's, it's coming from the food. Yeah, you know? we have to be really That's conscious. the title of the show. Why yeah. are we dying? It is coming from the food, according to Dr. Joel Furman. So this is his book, Eat to Live. He teaches us how to eat to live and not to live to eat. He's got a lot of examples in there of people, especially with diabetes. Dr. Furman says diabetes is the easiest disease to reverse because it is strictly linked to the food that you're eating. Everything they're going through is coming from the food that they're eating. The doctors is not going to tell you that. You know, they're going to tell you some other stuff and put you on pills. And, and then before you know it, people get sicker and sicker. They start losing limbs and then eventually in the casket, you know. So how could that medicine really been working? You know, it wasn't working. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a little. Like that book right there is nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. My book will be here tomorrow. 
I took wind of what was going on, what was being said. Mm -hmm. So I took an opportunity to skim through the book as I was in here the other day. I don't know if y'all seen me doing it. Mm -hmm. And I skimmed through there and I seen some valuable stuff in there. So I ordered my book the same exact name. Hey, congratulations, brother. So That's the first step. So therefore, the people, if I have any Facebook friends left, <laughs> <laughs> but while you was there, appreciate you. <laughs> but right. you know what I mean? But I'm going to get out there. I'm gonna, some of the stuff that I learned, I'm going to make posts about them. I'm going to mm -hmm. take you on this. Like, I tried the journey before, but I got uh, sidetracked of the people because the people don't want to see you be successful. Yeah. And I do not understand. That's why I go back to this voting thing only for a brief second. If I'm telling you I'm reaching out to everybody, said we should eat to live, try to be successful, don't shame a person wanting to do right. Mm -hmm. They want them to get on board. We want to do right. something that they don't want to do. Yeah. It makes absolutely no sense. So right. I'm telling everybody, so therefore, if I can buy this book, it is $9.99, and that I'm offering mm -hmm. certain, certain, some knowledge to help you live, why not take it? Why not take it? Mm -hmm. Why not take it? Because some of the stuff in that book, I do not eat. So Right. It's going to be a lot oh, of You ought to see Dr. Sabi's food list. Oh, I've seen it. It's a real short list. <laughs> it's a real short list. Because he said if it's not from the, if it's not from the, the sea or the forest, it's no good. Yeah, if, it's, if it doesn't grow naturally. You know what I mean? Like, we're supposed to eat electric foods, foods that grow naturally on God's green earth. Mm -hmm. You know, instead we're eating uh, dead meat. Yes. You know I mean, dead meat. You don't see a I bear. I mean, think about it. Even animals won't eat dead meat unless they're starving. You know what I mean? The animal will be starving. He don't want something that's dead. He wants to kill something live. <laughs> Roadkill, he walk right by. It. And again, unless he's in a crisis... And he's starving. So even the animal knows that dead, you know, dead meat in your yeah. body is not good for you. And that's a wake up for me. Like eating, I love steak because I can't eat none of the seafood that <clears> everybody <throat> else eat, like the shrimps and the crabs and the mussels and all that stuff. I can't eat none of that. So all right. So look, check this out. Since you mentioned steak, right? So let's go over um, how a plant-based diet has more nutrient density. So uh, Dr. Furman says the dangers of a diet rich in animal products is it's guaranteed that you will live a shorter life because it only leads to sickness. Examples are hypertension, heart attack, diabetes, cancer, stroke. It makes sense to opt for a plant-based diet. Plants deliver much more nutrients than meat. 100 calories of broccoli provide 2.2 milligrams of iron, 118 milligrams of calcium, mm. and 45 milligrams of magnesium. Steak, in contrast, only provides 0 0.8 milligrams of iron, two milligrams of calcium, and six milligrams of magnesium. And the reason why I brought that up is because you said steak, right? Because that's another myth that they've lied to us about, that you uh, get protein from animal flesh. And it's not true. You know, we went over this on Monday, but I'll go over it again. All protein comes from plants. It comes from plants. It does not come from animals. So you'll have bodybuilders who say, "I got to eat a lot of chicken." You know, I got I to eat yeah, a lot of meat. Yeah, yeah. Or if I if I go if I go vegan, I'm not going to get the proper iron. Iron comes from vegetables like spinach, right? So when you eat cow meat, right, hamburger, whatever, and then we think we're getting protein. If protein comes from meat, how did the cow get it? He doesn't eat meat. <laughs> he only well, he only eats grass, right? right. So there's right. your proof right there that protein comes from <clears throat> excuse me, fresh vegetables. And live electric food. Same with the gorilla. The gorilla is pound for pound the strongest animal on earth, along with the elephant. They don't eat meat. They don't eat meat. They only eat G bombs, <laughs> greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, seeds. You know what I mean? Good point. Good point. Right. So you know, it, it's 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 a lot of myths out here that they've been lying to us about. So you can eat as much protein as you like by getting it through vegetables. Mm -hmm. The only protein that comes from, uh, say, like beef is the grass that that cow ate. So that little bit of protein he got from the grass he ate that got into his flesh, that's the protein you're getting out of that burger. It's uh, it, it's a meth. Somebody would ask the gorilla. Right, that's how I was laughing. <laughs> that's how I was laughing. Then, yeah, I mean, <laughs> ask the gorilla. So, yeah, so um, we're not getting, you know, the protein and, and, and nutrients that we think are coming from this animal flesh. We have to consume things that are nutritious for the body. And you have to be aggressively nutritious. Remember we heard him say that? Mm -hmm. You have to be aggressively nutritious if you want to get healthy. You got to take control. And when you think about you got family, you got friends that love you, you got children. And, you know, we just live in the way we want to live, eating the way we want to eat. Uh, Dr. Furman is pretty, uh, he, he's pretty technical, <laughs> you know. He'll tell you about the glycemic overload, you know, when we eat foods. We, we call it itis, right? 
after you had a big meal, got itis. <laughs> Dr. Furman is like, it's not itis. It's a glycemic overload. Your triglycerides are through the roof. You don't even know it. Your body wants to die. <laughs> you know, and that's why it shuts down and goes to sleep. Puts you to sleep so yep. it can begin to repair yeah, all this hard. crack that you just it. jumped in here. Right. You know, so we're completely unaware of it. But uh, we got to learn each one, teach one. And we got to have these type of discussions. I'm, 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 I'm disturbed at getting, you know, phone calls in the morning about someone else that is either already passed or they're in the hospital and they're saying, you know, they're going to pass. And um, if it deals with heart attack, cancer, stroke, diabetes, high blood pressure, then I, I know it came from food. Right. So let's talk about high blood pressure. Let's get into this. Let's get into high blood pressure. All right. So high blood pressure or hypertension is typically the first sign of heart attack risk. So the first sign of these diseases is high blood pressure. You know, think about how many of us within our communities have high blood pressure. And we're on. Most people are on multiple pills. It ain't even just one. You know, it's multiple, three, four, at least two. Um, high blood pressure is a strong uh, factor for developing great diseases Kidney failure, stroke, and death. Letting your blood pressure run dangerously high is not wise for the body. Hypertension is often called the silent killer because it usually has no symptoms until the body is already damaged and a deadly heart attack or stroke occurs. So we walk around with high blood pressure and we don't even know it. We go to the doctors. They say, oh, you got high blood pressure. You're African-American, so it's hereditary. That's a lie. You have high blood pressure because what you inherited from your family was your eating habits. You eat the same foods that they eat. So they're lying to us about that as well. But those pills that they put us on are dangerous. Very, very dangerous. You know, like they're doing other things. Uh, what did Dr. Furman say? Uh, the, the blood pressure pill lowers the blood pressure, but it's like weakening the valves yeah. in the heart. And a stent will not help. A stent will actually cause a heart attack. Yes, because it's a foreign something, body. Foreign something in your body. Foreign substance in your body. So let's go over the three main causes of high blood pressure. Number one, atherosclerosis, which is the stiffening in nerve uh, vessels of the heart. Mm -hmm. Let me say that right. Atherosclerosis. That's a tricky word to say. <laughs> so, you know, so, okay. so that's the typical plaque in your arteries. Right. Number two, chronic high salt intake, leading to increased sympathetic and vascular tone. Salt. We're not supposed to be eating salt like this. The only salt that is is processed in your body decently is sea salt yeah right but even with that you, you still want to stay away from it as much as possible now the salt that most people eat which is iodized salt it's the worst salt ever you ever see what salt does to a snail mm -hmm. it's what it does to your arteries mm. you see so dr Furman said even a food that's claiming to be low sodium is still too much salt right. still too much salt He's like, it, it's no such thing as low sodium. It's got salt in it. It's bad for you. you know, yeah, it's he bad said the nutrient diet, he says 100%. 100% better than that DASH diet. Thousand percent. Yeah, he said thousand. <laughs> yeah. Thousand percent. Um, so the other, the other cause is chronic inflammation damaging the in endolithial lining causing construction and decreased elasticity. So salt is wrecking havoc within our bodies. And we just put salt on foods like, you know, for, for our taste. So, again, it's your taste buds that's getting you in trouble. You know what I mean? Make you want to have salt. Now, when I learned this years ago, like, I got rid of all the salt in my house. Like, there's, there's no salt in my house. And if you find any, it's sea salt. And usually that's for, like, a recipe. You know, where you have to add a pinch of salt. You add a pinch of sea salt. But overall, I got rid of the salt. I found that that's what I've had to do with a lot of things in order for me to go right with it. I can't buy no milk can't buy cow milk. I can sit here and say, I don't drink cow milk all I want. If it's in my refrigerator and it's a bowl of Fruit Loops in a box on top of the refrigerator. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm eating them Fruit Loops with that cow milk. So I, I got rid of that stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got rid of it. So uh, we got to get rid of salt. Take it out your house. Get rid of it. You don't need it. You got to learn to let your taste buds adjust so you can actually taste the food for what it tastes like. Because when we eat food, take it like a piece of broccoli. You don't really know what that broccoli tastes like. That broccoli got salt on it, pepper, butter, and cheese. Mm -hmm. That's what you're eating. <laughs> what did broccoli tell? Oh, it was good. It was good. Absolutely. <laughs> was it really? What did it really taste like? So, yeah, so we got to do better to prevent this sickness and uh, stop being selfish and, and, and look into this, investigate it. This is a great book to get. It'll give you a good start. He's got a lot of good cases in there. A lot of people are diabetic. It's crazy that he's saying he can 
cure diabetic, you know, in, what did, he, what did he say, a week? A month. Yeah, a week to 30 days, depending on how bad you and are. And you're off of it. And you're off of it. And you're off of it. Diabetes, right, they don't really connect diabetes with cardiovascular disease. You know what I mean? Like, but they should. See, that's more stuff that they hide. If you are a diabetic, right, and then you end up having a heart attack, you know, a, a heart crisis, right? So in the process, they go in there, they put the balloon in your valve, and then they open up your valve so the blood can flow. The minute they open that valve up, you also are no longer diabetic, and they won't tell you that. How can that be? I thought they were two different diseases. You know what I mean? Like, when have you ever heard anybody connect diabetes with heart? You know, but see, this is what they do. That's what Dr. Sabi was saying. They break it down into all these different things, but it's, it's, it's really just one sickness going on. It's compromising of the mucous membrane, excess mucus in your body. You know, we all cough it up. That's what that is. Now you cough, you got a little phlegm in your chest. We say, that's got a little phlegm in my chest. We think it's from sinus drainage. It's not always. Sometimes it's from the foods you eat, foods that are high in starch, like white potatoes. We really shouldn't eat white potatoes. White potatoes are very starchy. All they do is produce mucus in the membrane and give you a very small amount of micronutrients, and it just, you know, it's not good for the body, right? The only potato that is good for the body to process is a sweet potato. So I, I kind of switched that over over the years with my fries. So if I go somewhere and I do get fries, I'm like, y'all got sweet potato fries? Like, oh, yeah, we do. Y'all fry them or bake them? We bake them. Oh, great. Give me some sweet potato fries, right? Regular French fries are doing you in. That's why it's McDonald's' is, uh, number one seller. Signature. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You know, like the fries are doing the same. So high blood pressure is where this all starts, and uh, so many of us got high blood pressure. But just to know that we can actually physically do something to switch this around, you know, by listening to conversations like this, purchasing books like this, and stop being mentally lazy. That's a big problem. Nobody wants to read anything. Nobody wants to study a video. But this is literally life and death. Literally, like life and death. Like, I'm not the type of person, me personally, that you could tell me if I keep eating cheese steaks, they're going to kill me. I'm done <laughs> with cheese steaks, right? I don't understand how we have conversations and people learn these things, and then they just blow it off, you know what I mean? Right. They're going to go to the doctor, and then the doctor is just going to feed you, you know, what he's supposed to do, which is give you some more pills and, you know, come back, we'll check in, you know, three months and see if you can drop a few pounds between here and there. Like, that's not no instructions on how to save yourself. It's just a, it's the, it's the, the addiction of the food. Like, you yes. sent me that video before. Mm -hmm. The video sent me where they broke down the actual crunch. Mm -hmm. When you eat a cheese curl, the first thing you do, you put in your mouth that crunch. And you hear that sound. The first thing you hear that sound, you say, mm. Mm hmm Because the sound's intriguing. They have done every scientifically thing known to man You're being dealing bombarded. with food. Being bombarded. Because from the taste, the smell, the texture, you know what I mean? It's, it's just crazy. I remember watching this, um, it was a Jeopardy question. They said that, what do they put in Snickers bar? <laughs> and, number, and the other C was insect legs. So I look at it like, okay, mm. and that was the answer. That was the answer? C, wow. insect legs. <laughs> so wow. I looked at it like yeah. that. So when you look on the back of the of the, uh, of the ingredients, you're going to see these names that are foreign. Right. But when they break them down into language terms, you don't then know what it is. It. So the point is, it's the addiction. I got to, it's an addiction to me. Right. Dealing with, like, I love fried chicken. Mm hmm But I get it baked. I get it, um, what I do, I get it baked. The hot sauce on the side. Mm -hmm. So try to break down right. what's bad for me. Then turn around, the chicken's no good. Yeah, the chicken's not good for you either, man. If you ever watch What the Health on Netflix, they break down the grams of chicken and turkey versus pork and beef. It's like five, six milligrams or grams of cholesterol difference between them. The doctor explained, like, it's a difference between getting shot in the head or hung by a rope, you know, with your neck. He's like, they're both killing you. And it does make sense because think about how old school people will make like chicken and rice. You know, like your grandmother, your mm -hmm. mother, whoever, they take that whole chicken and put it in water and boil it. That's what makes the broth. All the cholesterol mm -hmm. and grease wow. coming off that chicken, and that's the broth. Then you take the chicken out, 
and then you boil the rice in that broth, and that's how the homemade chicken and rice tastes so good. You eat the rice, and it's got the flavor of the chicken in it, and then, you know, they go season the chicken up and put the chicken back in with whatever else they're adding. It's cholesterol. It's a whole bunch of cholesterol. So even the baked chicken thing is just a myth that they hooked us on. You know, people say, well, I just eat baked chicken. You know what I mean? Well, I just eat fish. Even They even tainted the fish. The fish, you can't go hard on the fish no more because all the oceans are poisoned now. So the fish contain the highest mercury levels that they've ever right. had. Right. And then mercury happens to be literally the most poisonous substance on the planet Earth. And this is what the fish are now filled with, mercury, because they dumping it into the oceans. Like, it's a maze. It's a process to learn all this stuff, right? But it's worth your life, and it's worth trying to save other people's lives. You know, so if I can be of help by being the one who does the research and then bringing it through the BBD radio show, that is, that's what it's going to be. And hopefully people will take heed to it and at least do their own research and uh, try to get yourself healthy. I mean, I'm constantly trying to get myself healthier, right? You know, like I always say, the disclaimer is I'm the messenger. I'm not saying I got this wrapped up either. You know, this helps me right. to get my act together and stay on point. I mean, how, how's it making you feel here on all this, Amber? Definitely. Um I, I actually have been on a, a, a I guess, a quote-unquote little journey, you know, but when it's brought in front of you, I, it's definitely something that's like, okay, I, I got to get back to it, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, eating more fruits and, and exp it's just... G-balls. Right, right. Just, you know, <laughs> the, since the pandemic. G-balls. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because I, I'm the first to, you know, have my kids go ahead and have the fruits and vegetables. And then I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go ahead. Shout out to Aunt Gloria. Case. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My auntie was on oh, here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, I mean, it has to be brought in front of you. It has to be something that you have to make a conscious, you know. You got to make a conscious effort yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, one of the first things I noticed when I started getting better, like I have periods where I go a little harder than other periods. I slack off, you understand what I mean? But when, right. I, when, I'm, in my, when I'm in my zone, I'm in my right state of mind, the first thing I noticed was the distance between me getting like sinus sniffles and stuff it got spread out more you get what i'm saying it used to be like soon as the weather change and you know you get through that one two months later you get it again you get what i'm saying like it, it spaced out my immune system actually got a little stronger you know and i wasn't getting affected as much and it's the same with sickness it will prevent you from being sick i hate being sick i hate oh, it man, it's right. i hate it like you know i'm a man y'all know what that means when i say i'm a man yeah, that means when I get, get yeah, sick. that means when I get sick, I'm useless. <laughs> I'm home crying. <laughs> you know, mm. I'm no good, right? So I got, I got to try to avoid this. I got to try to avoid this, and that's how we can do it. Right, exactly. That's how we can do it. What you got, Derek? What's in? Uh, mine is a shame. Uh, I feel ashamed. You feel ashamed because you know, <clears throat> I sometimes let my addiction supersede my judgment because I know. The stuff I put into me, because mm -hmm. I look at it like I don't eat a lot of strange food, mm -hmm. like chicken, steak. I don't do a lot of crazy stuff. I do broccoli, mashed potato stuff. I don't do a serious like where I'm putting in a lot of crazy stuff into my body. Right. But doesn't make it right. So yeah, it doesn't mean excuse. the stuff you're putting in is still that good. That is my. You do see me over there. You said the, the white potato. I said, oh man, yeah. I don't think you don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Hope he's wrong on that. <laughs> The first time I introduced to um, uh, uh, sweet potato fries was probably about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I was working as a prep cook, and I seen us, and I was offended. Like, right. who want to eat sweet potato? Cause I don't really. I'm not a sweet potato fan. Yeah, yeah, that's the so best potato you can it, eat. And I try and I fried. And I cooked them because, like I said, I had to cook them. Now I took a little piece, taste a little. Uh, I don't want to give me these light fries over here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now it's like more feeling of a shame because. I'm making an excuse because I don't eat a lot of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But the stuff I do eat is no good neither. Right. So that's a lot of, a lot of people do look at it. Well, I don't eat this. I eat right. this and I eat this. So then, and then here comes an excuse train. Everybody excuse why they can't eat this. And I was going to ask you this before I forget. Mm -hmm. Like, say, for instance, because, like I said, the Wilton McCall is my friend. Good, mm -hmm. good night. But I was sure. thinking about, yes, man. <laughs> Ten of these. Awesome. <laughs> I was thinking about doing, like, um... A plain peanut and raisins, like for like trying to, because certain berries I can deal with, certain I can't. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, will the raisin be sufficient or why to go? Raisins are good for you. Raisins are good for you. Um, Doctor Furman is a he, he's he's pro nuts. 
<laughs> Pro nuts. <laughs> we'll, take we'll, we'll take a pause for that one, y'all, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're going to take a pause. Pros, cons, pro nuts, right? But anyway, uh, but when you get into like Dr. Sebi, mm -hmm. Dr. Sebi said broccoli is a hybrid, right? Mm -hmm. So he's not saying broccoli is not a vegetable, but it's a hybrid, meaning it's not in its original state. It's a blend of two different vegetables. So he said you're not getting the nutrients out of broccoli that you think you are. Now, of course, Dr. Furman tells you exactly what nutrients you are getting out of it, right? He's pro, you know, for seeds and berries and nuts. But Dr. Sabi said the only nut you should eat and the only nut that's real and it's not a hybrid is a walnut. And I'm allergic to them. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So you can also eat the other ones. I'm just simply telling you the difference between both of their perceptions on nuts. That, that's why I asked because mm -hmm. the walnut, um, the I don't eat the pistachios and all that other crazy stuff. Yeah, I they're good. Bowl. I can't do it. I get sunflower seeds in my salads, you know what I mean? Yeah, right, yeah. You know what I, I mean? I can, I can do sunflower seeds, but I was trying to find something that, to add to the the peanut, like, that I can eat that is, that is, that is good for me. Right. Because I love peanuts and raisins. I used to eat the little, uh, mm -hmm. the little packs Tra together. Yeah, yeah, I know Trail what you're talking about. Trail mix. And I had, listen, I was eating the big bags back, and I stopped eating them because they started adding too much to it. They tropical. I just wanted right. regular peanuts and raisins and stuff like that. Uh, Dr. Um, Furman teaches of a homemade dressing you can make with peanuts and nuts. So it's, it's cashews, raisins, uh, nutritional yeast, and Dijon mustard. So you take a, like a half a cup of cashews and then like a half a cup of raisins, and you soak them in water for like 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Take them out the water, put them in a blender, add the Dijon mustard and the nutritional yeast, and then blend it together. And then make it into a smooth uh, dressing, mm -hmm. and he said it's, it's it's the best dressing you could ever get because even the the best vinaigrette is still made with olive oil, and olive oil is still a refined oil. Mm -hmm. So he's using the actual nut because nuts have oil in them. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, if you take a peanut and squeeze it between a napkin, the napkin will be oil. Well, you leave peanut butter out for a while. Right. And you natural natural peanut butter. Right. Yes. So if so, you're going to yeah. eat peanut butter, eat the natural peanut butter. So, yeah, he's saying even with the dressing, because he explains that, one, he said you should eat uh, like a head of lettuce every day. Right, that's deep. See, I never heard nobody say stuff like that, right? He said you should eat a head of lettuce every day of some type of green lettuce, as long as it's not iceberg. But you need to get greens in your body every single day. And when you eat a salad, he said you can make the best salad in the world. Like I do the G-Bomb salad, right? My salad's got... Uh, baby arugula in it. It's got romaine lettuce. It's got chopped up bok choy. Um, what other greens? Uh, it's got kale in it. But he's saying even if you put all the G bombs in it, and then you pour ranch dressing on it, yeah, you might as well eat a cheeseburger. Right. He said because that ranch dressing is worse than any hamburger you could have ate, any cheeseburger because at least that is. Uh, real meat that your body will process the staying system for about 30 days one hamburger right but he's saying the dressing can ruin the whole salad he's like so you'll have people that will start eating more greens and eating more salad and then lose weight but then their cholesterol still high the cholesterol still goes up he says so now you just got a slimmer person that's got high blood pressure and about to have a heart attack so he actually recommends making your own dressings and he's got um the recipes in this book Wham bam? Yes, yeah, it's, it's quite a few of them. And now he's actually got out a whole nother cookbook. I just got it not long ago of just his recipes. And he works with chefs to uh, get the recipes, you know, where they can taste half decent and so forth and so on. So, yeah, even the dressing is a big deal. You know, I get salads down here in White Marsh uh, every week from um, a little spot. And um, the best dressing they got is the raspberry citrus. So it's like gluten free and dairy free and. It's vegan and all that. And, uh, I mean, it actually tastes pretty good. You know, it tastes pretty good. But, yeah, you don't want to use no dressings that are creamy. None. Ranch, Thousand Island, French, all that stuff, blue cheese. He's like, you might as well eat a cheeseburger. You just robbed yourself of eating a cheeseburger. Ate a bunch of greens and, you know, dumped that mess on it. So, right. Yep. So, look, we're going to wrap it up. We didn't want to stay on here too long tonight. We just wanted to recap everything. So make sure you guys, if you get a chance to check this book out, it's called Eat to Live by Dr. Joel Furman. It will literally save your life, teach you how to reverse disease, prevent from getting disease. All right, so we'll leave you with this. Things to remember. One, food enters the body to either hurt or help. There's no in-between. Two, 
G-bombs promote health and get rid of disease. Remember, it's an acronym. The letter G, the word bomb. Greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. Number three, excessive amounts of animal product increase chronic disease risk. So you can't be eating a lot of meat. Dr. Furman says your body doesn't even need all that meat. He said your meat intake should only represent about 2 to 8% of what you eat every week. That's real low. Like we talking about like a turkey sandwich on Monday and no more meat the rest of the week. <laughs> right. <laughs> and number four is refined carbohydrates promote chronic disease and lead to people becoming overweight and obese. And with the overweight, Dr. Furman says you should never concentrate on trying to lose weight. Losing weight is a gimmick put out here within this society with all these different diets. What you want to do is concentrate on eating nutritionally. The weight will fall off on its own because your body knows what it wants to weigh and it will regulate itself into a healthier condition. So that's about it for me, man. Y'all got any final words on our little live broadcast, the BBD radio show, Why Are We Dying? Real brief. Um, like I said before, I don't take back nothing I said. I meant every word. So this is this is all love coming to y'all saying eat to live. No one's perfect. Everything is going to take time. I'm not perfect by far. The right. people who really know me know that I'm not perfect. But this is just a ploy to get you to understand that certain things like life is more important than fashion and more important than being seen and being heard. Because right. if you eat right, that means I'm able to see you in the near future. Yeah, you, you won't be around if you exactly. don't. Exactly. So if you're worrying about other things, trying to be a part of the problem instead of solution, right. then that's why I come into play. That's why I'm so angry. So it's nothing personal. It's just letting people know that I'd rather see living mm -hmm. instead of dying, falling victim to this pe to the social media um, platform. Right, right, right. That's all. Yeah, we got to take care of ourselves, and we got more control than what we think. And, uh, again, you're not going to learn this stuff overnight. Uh, food addiction is a big one we deal with, mm -hmm. sugar being one of the main ones, right. salt being another one. Um, uh, what did I leave out? Oh, lunch meat. We talked about lunch meat. For those who don't know, if you watch the documentary What the Health on uh, Netflix, you'll find out that lunch meat's horrible for you. Uh, it's got high-level carcinogens in it, and it ranks on the carcinogen scale the same as cigarettes, which is crazy. You know what I mean? That we've been eating that stuff, and, you know, it's got carcin carcinogen levels equal to cigarettes. So, yeah, uh, we got to put forth effort, you know, and save ourselves because if you don't spend the money now, on buying the healthy food, you have to spend it on a funeral. Mm -hmm. You have to spend it on hospital expenses, you know. You have to spend it on burial grounds. Medications. Medications, you know, new equipment for the house because things don't work no more. Can't get up the steps same way, things of that nature. So I just care about myself and the community and everybody else. I want us all to win. So we got to start talking to each other and stop always listening to other nations who don't necessarily have your best uh, interests at heart, you know, giving you the directions on how you need to do things when you are facing certain sicknesses or whatever. So, yeah, I love these kind of shows. I love this. Y'all quiet. Yeah, I was waiting for her. <laughs> oh, I, I said my piece. Oh, I didn't really, I mean, you know, the only thing I have is, you know, just remember, you talking about, you know, money and stuff, mm. you know, lack of money, the, the absence no of value. value. That's yeah. it. Lack of money is the absence of value. No That's value. all I value. So that means we're not valuing our health. We don't want to throw no money to it. That's right. Because that is often what they say. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. But is lack of money or is money is the absence of our value? Yogi trying to get it right. Look, schooling, man, for schooling. <laughs> She's your financial literacy coach. <laughs> all right, yeah. so we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, shout out to Eric Henson and Barry Dyson for having that awesome conversation we had a couple weeks ago. We was talking about this stuff, you know. So to get together with uh, three grown men and then my man Danny Post and so four, and we sitting at a bar and we not talking about football. We talking about how to eat healthy and live longer. I just thought that was a fantastic moment amongst black men. I hope to have more conversations like that with you fellas. So, uh, yeah, that's going to do it, man. Again, this was just another test run. We wanted to see how we're working out with the live. And uh, hopefully everything came through and the sound was uh, cool. And uh, we'll probably do a few more live shows for you guys. So thanks for tuning in with us, man. It's the Black by the Man radio show. On behalf of my team, Miss Amber Morgan, my man Derek Woodson, I'm your boy, Brother Mike. You know what it is. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.